Slofari Jinal Chende, Slovak Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for attending today's event. On behalf of the Indonesian Embassy in Bratislava, I'd like to welcome you all to Indonesia Slovakia Business Meeting and launching of Virtual Indonesian House. Today's event is organized by Indonesian Embassy in cooperation with the Rectorate of European Two Affairs, Indonesian Ministry for Foreign Affairs. All speakers from Indonesia will attend today's event virtually to Zoom. The program for today consists of two sessions, the first being business meeting and networking, and the second session is the launching of virtual Indonesian house. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the first session, we will have three speakers. Two speakers are from Indonesian companies, Wilman Indonesia and Kairos Millennium Resource. And the last speaker will be the Indonesian Investment Promotion Center based in London. To start the session, I would like to present our honorable moderator for today, Mr. Hendra Halim. Mr. Hendra Halim is the director of the European Two Affairs, Indonesian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and he will lead the Gemini virtually from Jakarta in between his busy schedule. We are very honored to have Pak Hendra. Is Pak Hendra on already? Yeah? Without further ado, allow me to give the floor to Mr. Hendra Halim to lead the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Budila. Yes. Uh... Thank you, everybody. Good morning, uh, Bratislava here. Good afternoon, Jakarta. It's quite sunny day here today. It's around like 34 degrees. It's quite good to kill all virus of corona. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, extend my appreciation to Ambassador Adiyad Widi Adiwaso, our ambassador to the, Republic, to the Slovak, Slovak Republic, Ambassador Dusan Matulai from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and of uh, Slovak Republic, and also I. I've seen here also the Ambassador Jaroslav Klebo, the Slovak Ambassador to the, to, uh, to the, to the Republic of Indonesia in Jakarta. And the, also to say, to say all of you are from Kadin, Chambers of Commerce, uh, and all the uh, distinguished participants, Dobre Rano, good morning. First of all, again, uh, as uh, just uh, MC mentioned about I think, our programs today, we are going to divide in two parts. First of all, we are going to start with, uh, we'll be begun with this, uh, uh, business, uh, I could say this is business discussion or uh, business forum between, uh, I think, uh, our, uh, among our business society. And the second one will be followed by the, the official launching of the uh, in a virtual Indonesian house uh, uh, initiated by uh, Embassy of Indonesia in Bratislava. And then, without further ado, I would like to uh, uh, introduce, uh, first of all, I think the, our program today is about like, uh, First program would be uh, for this our discussion, a business discussion today. We we are we are going to present three uh, the, uh, three speakers. One speaker uh, is uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chandra. Yeah, oh, Pat Chandra is there. All right. So maybe and Pat Chandra from Pat Chandra from uh, I think. Uh, hold on a second. I I, I just need something. Wilman Indonesia, Pak Raymond Chandra, Chandra, right. And then the second one, Mr. Henderson Lim from Kairos Millennium Resources. And, uh, and the last speakers would be Mr. Aditya Prasta from Indonesian Investment Promotion in London. And then uh, now I would like to invite our first speaker, Mr. Raymond Chandra, representative from Wilman Indonesia to uh, uh, deliver uh, the presentations. I just want to uh, inform a little bit about this, uh, the, the company profile. It is established in 2009. Wilmont has been known for producing processed foods and ingredients for hospitality industries in Indonesia. And their products are canned fruits, 
vegetables, feces, and 30 other products, quite a lot. The company was awarded with, with pride of Indonesia during the 9, 2015 Indonesian Trade Expo. And, you, and with that, I would like to invite Pak Chandra Wilman to deliver the presentation. Pak, Pak Chandra, silakan. The microphone is yours. So, uh, Pak Chandra, can you hear me? Maybe I need to check again. Hold on a second. Okay, then I think uh, he is a tr he tried to uh, get connection now. Maybe if uh, I could uh, adjust the programs, maybe I would like to invite. I think the uh, maybe uh, for this to, to second speakers. I think which is we have here from from uh, Mr. Henderson Lim, a uh, representative from Kairos Millennium Resources. Yes. Yes, please, Pa. Okay. Pa, pa Lim, please. Thank you so much. Uh, before oh. that, um, may I ask, is the presentation slides available or shall I do by myself? Uh, I think you can do, uh, I think uh, you can, uh, what, maybe we have to ask about the, uh, the, the, the committee. What can we do now? I think you can do by yourself, uh, if I could say, no? But I think in this regard, we are going to give the presenter um, um, maximum maybe 10 minutes or um, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. because I prepared some slides which I've submitted to the embassy last night. Right. Uh, so I just want to yeah. make sure that uh, is yeah. uh, either me or the embassy right. will be doing that. Let me check about the embassy now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So good, af good, good, good afternoon, Indonesia. Good morning, uh, Bratislava. So first of all, my name is Henderson Lim. I'm Indonesian um, and uh, I'm now in uh, Jakarta at the moment because of the lockdown, so cannot travel to Singapore, but my business entity name is Karos Millennium Resources Private Limited, and we have a co-partner um, factory of PT Nusa Alam rubber. Actually, we are primarily selling natural rubber, or we call some, some countries called natural crumb rubber. It's one of the main ingredients to make a tire or to, we sell to rubber compounder. Um, so this is quite a, a information. Um, the main reason why we, we have to set up a company in Singapore because some of the major tire companies, uh, they are opening um, a global purchasing, they call global purchasing office in Singapore. And number one, number two is our barometer of the price is determined by called Singapore Commodity, or we call SICOM price, which is monitored and, and examined daily. That's why that's the reason why uh, all the natural rubber uh, transactions are dealt mainly in Singapore. Okay, um, the address is located at um, outskirts of Jakarta, we call Banten. So nearest airport is our Jakarta, Sukarno Hatta International Airport. And our main seaport is uh, Tanjung Priok. It's one of our main port in Jakarta. Pretty much the uh, production capacity of the natural rubber is 18,000 metric ton per year. So it's around four, uh, 1,500 tons per month. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is the factory location. Okay, uh, please, next. Uh, pretty much uh, the factory sits on the 20,000 uh, square meet of the total land uh, where 5,000 uh, is dedicated for the making the factory and we have 1,000 square meet of raw mat, uh, which is the kaplam or which is the latex uh, that's the main ingredients of natural rubber. Next, please. Okay, this is these are some of the certificates of the ISO 9001 uh, awarded to uh, PT Nusa Alam Rubber means that this factory is uh, quality audited. Next, please. Okay, uh, uh, for, for some of the slides, uh, these are, I'm showing this main gate in front area. So the operator can just uh, uh, do the quick uh, next for, 
for several slides ahead. These are the main gate and front area. These are the raw mat and receiving area. You can see the kaplam. This is the major process photos. We are doing the cleaning process. This is the milling process we call in a natural rubber. So we mill from the kaplam. Uh, this is, we call this crumb, crumbing on drying. So we have the drying machine where we dry the natural rubber. So uh, again, this is the uh, this is the packing. So we uh, we do uh, the packing. I'm sorry. Uh, would you please just stop for a while for the previous slide? So we do uh, on the on the on the up on the bottom right part. Uh, we call natural crumb rubber. So it's in pallet. Some countries, uh, they are using good pack. Some countries uh, nowadays, especially developed countries, they, they, cannot, they cannot tolerate any using uh, a wood. So we have to use uh, either in good pack or in plastic pallet. Okay, next please. Uh, this, uh, we have also the lab which, which do the muni viscosity, some of the technical parameters. Next. Okay, uh, I call this finished good storage. As as I explained earlier, on the on the first picture, I uh, this is a wood pallet. Uh, some countries still still allow, but there are some restrictions like fumigation. On the right side is plastic pallet. So mostly we what we export right now is in plastic pallets. Uh, so it's not detrimental to the environment. Next, please. Uh, this is all the technical data sheet of I call SIR20. SIR20 means uh, st stands for Standard Indonesian Rubber Grade 20 uh, because uh, there are many uh, in the Far East, there are many producing countries like Indonesia, like Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, but our rubber plantation are still many. So uh, these are the technical data sheet. Next, please. Uh, I, I make some of our major export countries. We do export to USA, Argentina, uh, the Germany, some to Germany, some to Iran and Turkey. As per our Indonesian president instruction, we have to, uh, we have to penetrate to we call non-traditional market. So not only to US and Germany. That's why so starting the last uh, three or four years, uh, we, we start to sell into Argentine down and then to Iran, to Turkey, uh, some also to down under to Australia, where they don't have any tire, but they have so many, uh, they call rubber compounders, where they sell to the mining area. So these are some of the main export countries where we sell to for our rubber. Next. Okay, uh, this is just a quick, uh, this is my visit to Argentina a few years ago before pandemic. Where because they have uh, they have starting producing their own uh, uh, tire factories uh, local in Argentina. Next, I'm also selling to Dunlop Argentina. Also, uh, they are they are also doing quite well uh, in Argentina. Next, I'm also selling to this. This is the largest uh, tire factory in Turkey where I went to uh, every year before the pandemic, because they they export to US, they export to Europe uh, from Turkey. Next, I believe this is the end. Okay, this is some of this is some of the customers that we sell to. Okay, uh, you may skip it. Okay, okay. So this is quite uh, uh, straightforward because uh, natural rubber is is considered as a commodity. So thank you so much for the attention, and I hope the time is is still okay. Thank you so much. Going back to the moderator. Thank you very much, Pa Henderson Lim, for a very impressive presentations. I believe that in a sooner or later, I think your product will be in Central Europe, hopefully. But in this regard, of course, this is a very good example of how I think one Indonesian company uh, tried to uh, with, uh, with, uh, bravely uh, enter the market in, over con in many continents. So hopefully, I think uh, later on, I think that uh, after this after the three presentation, we are going to have an ample time to discuss between Indonesian and Bratislava business people. As I okay. just forget mentioned in the beginning, I think the main purpose of this business forum or business uh, uh, meeting discussion today is how to foster uh, to foster a closer a collaboration or cooperation between our business between business people between Indonesia and Slovak. 
And I know that, you know, we fully, I still remember that uh, back uh, almost two years ago, Ambassador Dutan Dusan Matulai led business delegation to Indonesia. I think it was, it brought about, it brought very good impression from our side. I think it also, it also brings encouragement from our business people how to uh, increase or to start opening uh, business uh, interaction between two countries. Thank you again uh, for uh, the presentation. Now I would like to move to the second uh, presentations. Uh, maybe uh, uh, from, so maybe I would like to see uh, whether uh, uh, Chandra already here. Right. Yes, can you hear yeah, me? Pachendra, yeah. How are you, yeah. Pachendra? I'm, I'm you good. There? So, yeah, I think my video is something is wrong. So I think I'm just going to talk like this. Is that going to be okay? <laughs> All right, that will be fine for us, of course, sure. as long as your presentation is quite clear. Okay, please sure. do so. Yes, thank you so much, Pachendra, for the time. Okay. And is the presentation is up there or do I need to? Ah, uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. So, yeah, I'm... Um... Uh, thank you again, Pahindra, for the for the opportunity. Thank you so much for and and uh, for letting me uh, introduce the company to you all. Um, hello, uh, Bratislava, and hello, Indonesia, as well. And yeah, nice to see you all. And I would like to introduce myself. My name is Raymond from Wilman, Indonesia. As you know, that uh, Wilman is a is a local Indonesian company who focuses on uh, canned food uh, distributions and manufacturing. So we are focused on uh, fish, um, uh, canned fruits, uh, canned vegetables, and other ingredients as well. So as you know, um, can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Yes, uh, we were established in 2009, and um, we have been known for delivering uh, can, uh, processed canned food to uh, F&B businesses, uh, caterings, hotels, um, food services and bakeries and, and you name it, any other um, uh, food services in Indonesia, uh, across Indonesia for the past 10 years. And our products range from, as you know, um, later on in the presentation, I have a range of our products uh, that we sell in Indonesia. We have uh, fruits, vegetables, and fish, and any other complementary ingredients as well, which I will tell you later on. And um, all the products have been registered under uh, BPOM, the National Food and Drugs and Safety Body in Indonesia. And most of our products are uh, MUI halal certified or Indonesia halal certification. And as you know, we always um, continually to join the Trade Expo Indonesia every year for the past, I think, five to six years. And we have been invited um, regularly by the Ministry of Commerce to promote Indonesian products to overseas such as uh, Holland, Egypt, uh, Middle East, uh, Malaysia, and other, any other countries. We have been joining the, the, the expo for the past uh, five to six years, I guess. And yeah, um, that's a little bit of our sto story. And I can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, just go next one, that's just a, a presentation. Yeah, uh, this is our value, the honesty, integrity, professionalism. I will explain why these values are important in, in the canned food industries. And as you know that the canned food business is a bit tricky, as you know that if it's written like 250 grams, it doesn't, it doesn't always uh, contain 250 grams. It might be able to have less or more. So that's why honesty, integrity is very important. We wanna make sure that the customer is actually buying what they buy. So that's the case because canned food is, is completely sealed. It's not like the bottle jar or that you can see through. You cannot see the quality, you cannot see the quantity. So that's why these are the values that we, we have, that we have to hold on to. Um, that's our vision and mission. We wanna to continue to deliver um, excellent uh, of, of, uh, food uh, ingredients to, to across Indonesia and hopefully to other countries as well. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, our, one of our tagline is eat from the can. As you know, uh, this is our real product photos. Um, as you know, as I said before, canned food um, might be uh, look the same from the outside, but again, from the inside, it might be different. Again, as I said before, the quality of the canned food is, is we cannot see the quality from the can. We, cannot, we need to see from the inside. But the thing is, can is actually enclosed. It's not like a bottle jar that we can see. That is why one of our tagline is eat from the can, which means that we are make sure we are we have to sh um, make sure our customer that the product is actually fresh, is actually 
fresh in terms of the canned food freshness. And then um, the quantity, the quality is actually ensured inside the can. If I say the broken rate is 3%, it has to be 3%. It cannot go more than 3%, things like that. Because as you know, a lot of people um, complain when they buy canned foods. It looks nice, but when you open it, it doesn't look as it seems. So that's why these are the values that we are hold on to. We need to make sure we are sure that our products is actually the best that we can give to our customers. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, um, again, um, I always say to my clients, why do we actually uh, buy canned food? As you know, it's convenient. It's, it's, a, it's a proper long storage, um, a, a, food term, a long term, long term of food storage. It can go up to three years, uh, expire days up to three years. And then it's consistent. As I said, we, need, we are sure that the quality, taste, colors, texture are actually a certain in our can, even though it's not seen from the outside. And then it's credible because every product has actually gone through the GMP or good manufacturing practice and then the HACCP and all of those standards are actually uh, complied to. Um, next slide, please. Yes, that's one of the one of our, our, our favorite products. One of the most selling products in Indonesia right now is actually the, the Mandarin orange right here. Why? I would like to explain a little bit more because Mandarin orange is actually used for a for a, a, a complementary products for bakeries, uh, tarts, and and uh, uh, beverages, drinks, and everything. So, um, as a bakery uh, in the bakery industry, they want to make sure that the 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 mandarin orange is still it looks like a mandarin orange. It's not broken. That's what I said. That uh, we have a minimum broken rate that we offer to the customer. That's why we are we are sure that. When you open the can, it's going to look like this. It's not going to be broken because if, if it's broken, uh, our customers cannot be cannot cannot use the product. As you know, it, it's it's for the garnish. It's for the complementary products on top of the on top of the products that they sell. So that's why we want to make sure that they receive what they see in the pictures. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, I would like to introduce. Uh, this is the first um, slides of the Wilmon product range. It's starting from the canned fruits. As you know, we have the uh, lychee, longan, mandarin orange. Uh, we have another lychee as well. It's a different uh, origins. The first one is from China. The second one is from Thailand. As you know, um, every country is produced different. Um, even though they produce the same fruits, they produce a different character of lychee. So this is this is are the things that I want to uh, educate our customers. What are the difference, etc. And um, eighty of eighty percent of our products are actually imported products. Why? Because not all fruits are are uh, are able to grow in Indonesia. That is one of the problem. Lychee cannot grow in Indonesia. Mandarin orange cannot grow in Indonesia. Longan cannot grow in Indonesia. That's the problem. And then like. Um, uh, you can you can see that the the sliced pineapple is actually from local because Indonesia is one of the biggest pineapple producer in the world, and after Philippines I guess so yeah uh, those are the products uh, locally that we we produce locally in Indonesia. Next slide please. Yes, this is a, a second range as we know that there we got peach as well we got fruit cocktails. Um, uh, tropical fruit cocktails and as you know there's a country of origin which is south africa china indonesia uh another china and south africa again as i said uh, different countries might produce the same fruits but again they have a different characters so that's why and price wise also different there's there's always a grade a and grade b uh, for example that's why uh, indonesia market is very big it's very big uh, as in now, not everyone can afford South Africa fruit cocktails. Let's say, oh, a lot of my customers um, saying that to me, oh, I cannot afford uh, uh, that price for South Africa fruit cocktails, even though it's a good quality one. So what can I do? That's why we make a second line, which is from China, which is a little bit cheaper, not a little bit, quite a lot of cheaper, which is um, uh, according to their uh, target market, which one they actually need the most. And sec uh, next slide, please. Yeah, those are the products that um, you can see. There's a tuna right there. There's a tuna chunk on the left, uh, top left-hand side, a mandarin orange. That's our sliced pineapple. That's our longan. 
that's our the bottom right hand side is our corn kernel which is from thailand as we know that thailand is one of the countries where they produce the best um, fruits and vegetables that's why we are um, partnering with our um, a partners uh, manufacturing in thailand to produce our our corn whole, whole kernel corn and next one next slide Yes, these are the fishes that we sell. We have two types. It's the same fish. Um, it's a skipjack tuna. Uh, this is locally produced in Indonesia, in West, uh, sorry, in East Java. And we have two types, which is one in soya oil, and we, the other one is in brine or, or in salt water. We have two sizes, the, the food survey sizes, which is the 1880 grams, or the small one, which is the 185 grams. So it just depends on the customers which size they need the most and next one please yes these are the vegetables that we sell again um we have the champignon mushrooms we have straw mushrooms a uh, green peas asparagus asparagus we have two types the spears and the cut and these are all from china as we know that china is one of the most uh the biggest uh producers of mushrooms in the world and we have the best quality of mushrooms in, in the world as well. So that's why um, these vegetables uh, or, or the country of origins, we, I will say that we, we, we actually choose which countries can produce the products uh, the best. Let's say, let, like I said before, uh, South Africa produce um, uh, peaches the best in the world. And then um, Thailand produces longan, lechi and, and corn. So that's why uh, we actually choose uh, a different countries of origin for our products. And next slide, please. Yes, this is one. This is the second most selling products in Indonesia right now for Wilman, which is the kernel corn. Why? Because um, people, a lot of people actually ask me, what is the difference between frozen and canned food um, corn? As you know that the frozen one, it's actually very dry. It doesn't contain any moisture of the of the of the corn, whereas in the can we still have the moisture, we still have the aroma, we still have the freshness that we can get in a can. That's why um, a lot of people actually compare between a pouch uh, frozen uh, uh, corn kernel versus the the can one, and which is. In my opinion, a lot of customers as well, uh, they agree that the quality is different. Again, you can you can get a, a little bit cheaper um, in terms of the pricing, but again, for the quality, uh, I think there's no way that we can replace the quality uh, that we have in the can. So uh, next slide, please. Yes, these are the, uh, the continuation of the, the vegetables and ingredients that we have. Um, we have baked beans. This is the whole kernel uh, that we that I uh, I mentioned before. We have a cream style as well. It's the same, but it's in cream style. It's more. Uh, it is used for uh, more to a Chinese food restaurant kind of style for the soup and and etc. And baked beans as well. We supply to hotels, the three, four, five star hotel for their international breakfast. And uh, the last one, it's not a canned food. Again, as I said, it's the ingredients that we sell. It's not always a canned food, but we are focused on canned food. Um, a breadcrumb. Breadcrumb, again, one of the, the, the best producer is in Vietnam, as you know. That is why uh, the origin of this breadcrumb is from Vietnam. Uh, what makes it different? Again, this is quite special. As you know, breadcrumb, when you fry the, let's say, a, a shrimp prawn or something, um, these breadcrumb can make your your bread your, your shrimp keep uh, maintaining its crispiness for the for the next three four hours. So these are the qualities that uh, that the chef are looking for. That's why we we have been uh, re, uh, doing our R and Ds with the manufacturing. Uh, I want to make a breadcrumbs that is different with the others, and we came up with this product, and it's. Uh, we supply to hotels, um, four or five star hotels, uh, Japanese restaurants, and many other uh, food services as well. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, what are these? These are the food services size. As you know, we have different size of cans. The previous one I have mentioned, it's a small cans. Small cans means 200, uh, 500 grams can. And this one is a big one, which is three kilo cans. 
Um, and we have uh, several products, which are the whole peeled tomato, tomato paste, the whole kernel corn, uh, the peach, and the champignon as well, the mushrooms. Uh, why we do this uh, sizes? Because it's um, looking at the demands in Indonesia of and our customer as well. Um, if a big food service, they would prefer a big sizes because it's more efficient, uh, it's cheaper, of course, and it is more convenient for them, for them to keep. They can just open it, put it in the containers, seal it, put it in the fridge, and then that's it. And you can keep it for the next three years. And yeah, so those are the food services that we have. And next slide, please. And yeah. I think uh, there's one, uh, one of the, um, a brief presentation uh, that I can give. And I think uh, you guys um, understand what I, what I mentioned about our company. And again, before, uh, not forget to mention that we, we can also cater all our customer needs. Let's say um, these are the products that we sell in public. But again, if let's say as one of my customers, oh, I need, um, uh, a South Africa peach in three kilos. Yes, we can do that. We can cater that as well. Um, and yeah, those kind of things, those, those kind of customization we also can do for our customers. And yeah, I think uh, that's it from me. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And we got our website as well. If anyone wants to have the company profile, I can forward it to you by emails or by WhatsApp and feel free to contact me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, by Raymond Chandra, I think, for the very uh, tempting presentation, I could say, because, you know, all presentation about the food. I know, believe that. I think when you went mentioned about the shrimp there, but also the tropical products, I just, one thing I just remember, but one thing I remember about Slovak, since many people, they prefer to, to have uh, eating uh, meat, so I think it's really good uh, option, option for us, you know, to try Indonesian uh, shrimp as well. So, in the Indonesian tuna, by the way. And I don't think also very interesting from, from your side about, I think when you mentioned about like, you know, you are from the fruits, maybe maybe in the future, who knows, maybe you can find a partner in Slovak and to, try to, uh, what we call it, promote Slovak uh, fruits and then put on the can and then you can market them, I think, uh, uh, just in the region. So this is very good collaboration, hopefully, yeah. But again, of course, thank you so much for this one. Maybe later on we can we can further um, we can have opportunity to discussion uh, with uh, with all speakers. And I know that you know this is too bad for all of us. I think uh, so far we, we only can use this uh, platform, virtual platform, to have such uh, to have this webinar or business uh, uh, forum. If not, of course, I believe that Raymond, will, Mr. Raymond, will will be. Um, we'll be able to present to all of you you know, to taste, I think, the canned food you know, here from, from, from his company. And ladies and gentlemen, this thing is participants. I would like to invite, I think, the next speakers. I think I just forget to mention, by the way, this is about like, you know, from the Indonesian CMAS Corporation. You know, the Indonesian one of, one among others, the uh, exporter country, our biggest exporter for textiles. So this in this regard, I think, uh, we, we have we, with with our with uh, with our today. I think we have a uh, Mr. Sundarajan. Uh, Sundarajan, he's the owner of Simas Corporation in Indonesia. I think uh, this uh, the company well known in textile industry for many years, and then making polyester yarn and textile finished textile products. And um, I think among products of his company is health equipment, an important product to address in the, during the pandemic. But for further detail, of course, and I would like to invite Mr. Sundarajan to uh, give um, uh, the opportunity to explain about the company profile. Please, Pat Sundarajan, the speaker is yours. Pat Sundarajan? I just saw him, I think, on this, in this room minutes ago. Oh, wait a minute, maybe. Oh, yeah, I think I saw you. I saw him on the screen, but I think, uh, hello, Pat Sundarajan, are you there? 
maybe while you're waiting, I think I would just know. I think let's move to another speakers. I we here we go. Uh, I think here we here with us. I think we have the uh, our colleague from London. I think he's the director for Indonesian uh, Investment Promotions uh, Center, uh, Mr. Aditya Prasta. He's uh, one of the eminent uh, uh, investor uh, investment officer from our parts. So I think. Mr. Aditya is responsible for the whole, uh, for the entire Europe to promote Indonesia, how to link with the foreign investor as well. So I think in this regard, I think uh, Mr. Aditya will, will explain, you know, the business opportunity, investment opportunity in Indonesia. And hopefully later on, I think, uh, uh, I think we can do something there. We can see, I think, more uh, inbound or outbound investment between two countries. So Pak Aditya, I think um, now it's your turn to uh, give presentation to all of to all participants. So maybe I'll give you the I'll give you the floor now, Pa Aditya. Please do. Thank you. Are you there? Thank you so much, moderator, Bapa yes. Indra Halim. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, her and His Excellencies, uh, Madam Ambassador Ibu Adi Atwidi Adiwoso, uh, Director General who. American and European Affairs, Bapak Ngurah Swajaya, Ambassador Dusan Matulai, Ambassador Jar Jaroslav Klebo, uh, distinguished uh, panelists and speakers, Bapak Sulaiman Saleh, uh, Mr. Yurai Maitan, uh, Bapak Raymond Chandra, interesting presentation, uh, Bapak Anderson Lim as, as well, an interesting presentation, Mr. Sundarajan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon in Indonesia and good morning in Bratislava and London. Uh, big thank you for Madam Ambassador and the Indonesian Embassy in Bratislava for hosting this webinar, webinar and launching a virtual Indonesian house. A big honor for me to be here. A uh, lot of investment updates from Indonesia that I will try to uh, bring today. Uh, but of course, I will try to summarize some of them for you through my slides. Please, uh, the next slide will be, um, you know, the, the, the division of um, my slides. Yes, I will divide my slides into four sections. They are uh, Indonesia, investment performance, potential sectors, investment policies and incentives. Next slide, please. Yes, please, next slide. Yes, of course here we can see that uh, Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago. If you would like to travel from the western part of Indonesia to the most eastern part of Indonesia, it is basically the same as you are traveling from the western part of Ireland to the middle part of Turkmenistan, so it is quite huge. And uh, we also have, uh, um, you know, 36% of uh, ASEAN economy, 40.8% uh, of ASEAN total population, and around 273 million people who lives in Indonesia. Please, next slide. Again, why Indonesia? Indonesia is one of the G20 countries. Right now, we are currently sit in the 16th rank. Uh, currently, we also have a quite young population, around 44% of Indonesians are aged under 25. We are also um, expected to be the 10th largest economy in 2025, and we also have a quite steady economic growth from time to time. Next slide, please. In terms of investment climate, nowadays, Indonesia has quite strong commitment to create a better business climate to support FDI. <clears throat> Currently, we are one of the biggest movers in terms of uh, ease of doing business ranking uh, from the World Bank. We have moved around 36 ranking in the last five years. Uh, currently, we sit at the 73rd ranking. We, if we compare it with uh, BRIC countries, we are also above Brazil. 
And in terms of credit ratings in 2020, a lot of uh, prominent credit ratings agency valued Indonesia as investment grade countries. Uh, some of them are Moody's, S&P Global, JCR and Fitch Ratings. Next slide, please. This is the second section of my slide, the investment performance. Uh, FDA from all over the world in the last five and a half years is quite encouraging. Uh, about 15.98 billion came from European countries. Uh, most of them came from the Netherlands. And of course, if we try to compare the European countries is still quite small because uh, most of the FDI who came to Indonesia came from uh, Asian countries, just like our neighbors, Singapore and Malaysia, and of course, uh, Japan, China, and Hong Kong. Next slide. FDI from Slovakia uh, is not uh, big, at least yet, because I think um, not all of uh, investors from Slovakia who, who would like to invest in Indonesia directly came to Indonesia. Uh, maybe some of them would like to register their co companies in their headquarters in Hong Kong or Singapore first and then came to Indonesia. Therefore, they are recorded in our database in BKPM in Jakarta as the as the investment from Europe, from not from Slovakia, but it is from Singapore or Hong Kong. And right now, all of the all of those investment came to hotel and restaurant sectors and to Bali and Nusantara region. Next slide. So potential sectors. Uh, this is quite potential because um, Indonesia is huge. And the, the cooperation of investment between Slovakia and Indonesia is still uh, not big right now, but I think there are a lot of uh, potentials here. So Slovak investors can come to Indonesia to invest in renewable energy, electronic industry and manufacturing, and of, and of course, food and agriculture industry, just like uh, what was brought before by uh, Mr. Uh, Henderson Lim and Mr. Raymond Chandra. Next slide. These are some opportunities in infrastructure sectors. We are currently developing the PPP scheme, the public private partnership, partnership scheme. Uh, it can involve the private sectors who, who would like to join the development of infrastructure projects in Indonesia. And this, these uh, can be divided into two uh, main types. Uh, they are the solicited, uh, which uh, feasibility studies are, hold by, are held by the government of Indonesia. And then the second one, the next slide, is the unsolicited projects. Uh, these projects are feasibility studies uh, are formulated by the private sector. So you can either um, you know, involve in infrastructure development and investment in Indonesia by doing the feasibility study or doing the, the infrastructure um, construction as well. Next slide, please. And these are the economic zones as our strategic investment locations. A lot of uh, economic zones, they are developed by government of Indonesia from the special economic zones, free trade zones, and a lot of uh, industrial estates, as well as Tanu Bali's in terms of priority tourism destinations. Next slide. These are the special economic zones in Indonesia. Currently we have at least 15 and we are still developing a lot of uh, them. We are still um, analyzing some of the proposal from the regional uh, government. Next slide. And this is one of the newest 
industrial estates in Indonesia, the Batang Integrated Industrial Park. Uh, the government of Indonesia uh, joined hand in hand with the regional government of Central Java and a lot of private sectors as well to develop this um, this industrial park. It is quite uh, potential because um, it is located nearby the interna international airport and the international seaport in Central Java as well. Next slide. <clears throat> And these are the 10 new Bali's. At least we also have here four different super priority destinations. They are Mandalika, Labuan Bajo, uh, which uh, airports is currently developed and managed by the Changi Consortium. And then Borobudur, the famous temple in uh, Southeast Asia. And then, of course, Lake Toba, the most uh, famous uh, volcano lake in Indonesia. Next slide. This is also one of the newest and, uh, you know, the most potential sectors in our country, the digital industry, because we have uh, such a young demographic situation. We have at least 79% of our population below 55 years old. And we have one of the world's largest internet user bases. We also have a large untapped population and a lot of uh, middle class also. Next slide. Related to the digital industry, currently Indonesia is ranked seventh as of 2020, as surpassing France and Switzerland in terms of uh, unicorns producer. Uh, we have at least right now five different unicorns uh, in different sectors from the online shopping to transportation until the travel, travel companies. And the uh, valuation is quite huge, 15 billion US dollars as of 2020. Next slide, please. This is also one of the newest uh, sectors that, uh, that was tried to be developed by the government of Indonesia, the battery-based electric vehicle industry. The government of Indonesia tried to build uh, from A to Z um, you know, industry because we have a, a potential raw materials in, in the forms of nickel and we also have a quite uh, new refinery right now. And we, try, we are trying to have a cooperation with a lot of battery manufacturers. And hopefully we can develop as, uh, we can be developed as one of the main players in the electric vehicle market uh, in not so distant future. Next slide, please. This is the investment policies. And of course, you would, you would like to see some incentives regarding investment in Indonesia. And this is uh, my headquarters, the BKPM, Indonesia Investment Coordinating Board. Basically, we are the bridge between the private sectors and the government uh, between, in Indonesia. So we are trying to help facilitate a lot of investors, both from uh, foreign domestic, foreign direct investors and also the domestic direct investors. Next slide, please. Based on one of the newest presidential instruction, uh, a lot of uh, ministers and head of institutions in Indonesia have taken necessary steps according to their respective duties in delegating authorities from them to about the business licensing and granting investment facilities to our chairman in BKPM. Next slide, please. And during these uh, quite challenging times, the pandemic, we also try to facilitate a, a lot of uh, investors who would like to come to Indonesia, to go to Indonesia, to visit their investment. Uh, we 
we have provided some facilitation to uh, in order to help them to get their visas to go to Indonesia. Next slide, please. Don't worry, Pahendra, it won't be long. Thank you, time, so, <laughs> Thank you. So the next slide will be about the tax holiday. Uh, it is quite interesting here because uh, we have managed to uh, develop at least 18 different industry groups. Uh, the, basically for the tax holiday, there are the minimum requirements of uh, investment around 500 billion rupees uh, that will be around 38 or 36 uh, million US dollars and basically the the eligible sectors will be in the next slide you can see in the next slide please okay thank you and this is the eligible sectors to apply a tax holiday in Indonesia uh, they are quite uh, varied, so varied. So here you can see a digital economy, economic infrastructure, who also deals, um, uh, who also, which also includes the renewable energy power plant. And of course, uh, they are also manufacturer for main component for train, also for main raw material for pharmaceutical, basic in organic chemical industry and Etc. You can also analyze this later because uh, I would I would like to share this presentation with the Indonesian Embassy in Bratislava as well. Next slide, please. So, if your uh, investment is not uh, you know uh, quite huge, so uh, it doesn't um, you know eligible for the for the tax holiday, you can also apply for the tax allowance if your business activities are also included in the 183 business activities in Indonesia. Next slide, please. And this is one of the newest development regarding the super deduction tax. The government of Indonesia through the Ministry of Finance also trying to provide uh, more incentives for investment that can, uh, you know, involve labor in intensive industries or vocational training programs. Or the newest one is the research and development uh, activities. Uh, all these activities can be, you know, applied to the Ministry of Finance to get the super deduction tax and reg the regulations is uh, formulated in the government regulation number 45 of 2019 and the technical regulation, at least uh, we are still formulating for the R&D uh, right now, but we have already got the technical, you know, the, de the detailed regulations for the vocational training and the labor intensive industry. Next slide, please. And this is the system that uh, was um, developed uh, about two to three years ago in our uh, headquarters in Jakarta in the KPM. Basically, we would like to simplify the licensing process by deregulating unnecessary licenses by line ministries or agencies. So uh, after the investors came to Indonesia and, and you know, register their uh, companies in, as the Indonesian based uh, company, and then basically the whole system can be done uh, online. Next slide, please. And this is maybe uh, one of the most weighted uh, law in Indonesia. Hopefully we can simplify and harmonize a lot of regulations and permits 
uh, we can provide more quality investment, more job creation, and sustainable, uh, more sustainable worker welfare through this omnibus law. Hopefully, we can at least uh, we are still formulating it with uh, our parliament in Jakarta. Next slide. This is my last slide. Uh, basically, we would like to invite all of you to come to Indonesia and maybe if Indonesia is uh, a bit too far, you can also come to our office in London and you can basically explore uh, about our website here, the www.investinindonesia.uk. Jacqueline, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Back to you, over to you, uh, Bahendra. Thank you so much, Paditya, for informative presentation. I believe so. I think uh, our colleagues from Baratis, uh, from Slovakia um, obtained many information you know, from this presentation. But for despite this challenging time, but I'm sure thing, one or two of uh, participants would like to know more thing how to do business in Indonesia. I believe so. I think the next session, during the discussion session, I think you will be able to explain more. But of course, as you, you just mentioned, of course, you are op you open the door you know, to any inquiry from our colleague in, in Slovakia. And I cannot also uh, forget about, I think, the role of our uh, embassy in Bratislava, uh, Ambassador, uh, Madam Ambassador, uh, Idea with the idea also, and, and the Enable team. And of course, I think uh, I just forget to mention as well, we, are, we also have here, I think, the representative of Indonesian Chambers of Commerce, pa, uh, Sulaiman Saleh, I think he's the eminent person from Kadin Indonesia Chambers of Commerce, who so far think, I think uh, 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 never, uh, what we call it, uh, he's effortless you know, to dedicate, I think, how to promote Indonesian business in Central Europe. Uh, I think, uh, thanks again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we just have so far, I think, four, uh, three presenters. And I just, yeah, apparently, I think the last presenter from textile industry won't be able to join since I think he's already in, in the commitment. But of course, in this regard, I still, uh, I think, uh, do we, need, I'm a director, I, will, uh, I think the committee, do we have a, a time to discussion or we just, so, or I just give uh, the, the, the floor back to the, to the MC. But I think, uh, of course, you know, without further ado, of course, you know, maybe um, I just want to give an opportunity, a chance, you know, for our for distinguished participants in, uh, in from Bratislava. Should be any comments or maybe any questions, please do so. I think uh, we are open since we have uh, three speakers are ready to entertain the question or discussion. But of course, should have you have any something? Uh, I think uh, please also you can write it down on this. Uh, on this platform, on the room, I think chat room, is you have any questions uh, from the uh, pre the first speakers from pa Raymond and also uh, pa, uh, pa, uh, pa, uh, pa Lim and also from from the from Henderson Lim from uh, Kairos, I think uh, Millennium Resources. It's very interesting presentation of as well, and also pa, uh, Raymond uh, uh, Chandra from Wilman Indonesia and pa, uh, Aditya Prasta from uh, Indonesian Investment Board in London. So I think um, please uh, let me know, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, should be should be any uh, uh, participant would like to address the question. And Ibudila, please help me as well because I couldn't see clearly whether any participant would like to address the questions. So again, I think uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is very good opportunity for all of us here to to this uh, to uh, take uh, this momentum, you know, to discuss and how to further collaborate to promote our bilateral economic, economic cooperation. And uh, this is our also main duty, despite in a, a very challenging time, but of course we are keen to, at least I think there is also the, uh, uh, I mean like the opportunity to, 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 to link and match between the uh, business people from two countries. Since I haven't seen, since I haven't seen, I've seen none questions, uh, you know, from all of them, but I just want to, uh, just want to ask uh, pa, 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 pa Henderson Lim and pa Raymond, both of you, have you been to Slovak? Pa? No, just no, put, not yet. Yeah. So do you have any plan for that? 
Uh, I don't think so in this moment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know it's not this moment, but of course yeah. you should go there. Of course. Oh yeah, of course. This beautiful country, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I think I believe so. Maybe uh, for that, the next part of our uh, event today, of course, there would be like the soft launching of our plat new platform. Of course, in this regard, you will be you will be uh, uh, mostly welcome to to be part of it as well. So I believe right. so. Thank you. Uh, but again, uh, 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 Raymond Chandra and Pa Henderson Lim and also Pa uh, Aditya Prasa, thank you again uh, for your presentation for your. Uh, what we call it for your efforts and you know your uh, endless effort to promote Indonesia to uh, our colleagues in Bratislava and so and now I think uh, I think I would like to uh, give the floor back to the MC and to proceed for the next session and uh, I would like to see as well I think since I've seen our, I think uh, the Director General for America and European Affairs from Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia Ambassador Nguras Wajay already with us in this room Welcome, selamat sore, Pak Dirjen. So, um, with the with Father Du, I would like to give uh, 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 the floor back to the MC. Thank you so much. Silakan, Ibu Dila. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, facilitating such a smooth interaction between speakers. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we will proceed to the second session the launching of Virtual Indonesian House. Virtual Indonesian House is a website designed by the Indonesian Embassy in Bratislava as a virtual platform aiming to introduce and promote the potential of Indonesian trade, tourism, and investment to Slovak business person and also related stakeholders. During the session, we will have opening remarks from our beloved ambassador, Madam Abiyatu Diaz Nwoso, and then we're also honored later to have two prominent persons as keynote speakers. His Excellency Ambassador Mira Swajaya, who will be virtually speaking from Jakarta, and also here with us today, His Excellency Ambassador Busan Matulai. And also remarks from both of our chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Sulaiman Saleh and Mr. Mirai Maitan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome His Excel Her Excellency, Ambassador Adiatwidi Adioso, Indonesian Ambassador to Slovak Republic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Widya. Uh, Excellency uh, Ambassador Dusan Matulai, the Director General of Economic Cooperation, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Foreign and European Affairs of Slovakia. Welcome. Uh, Excellency Ambassador Nuras Wajaya, the Director General for American European Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jakarta. And Mr. Hendra Halim, Director of European Two Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia in, in, in Jakarta. Uh, Mr. Suleiman Saleh, the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Jakarta. Mr. Uh, Yurai Matan, the Slovak Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And Mr. Igor Ines, the Bratislava Chamber of Commerce. And Mr. Omera from from the company distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen Dobriden, selamat siang di jakarta first of all i would like to extend our warm welcome to the embassy of indonesia and thank you for your presence at today's event for the launching of future indonesian house and our yearly uh, business launch I would also like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the director, Directorate of European Affairs uh, uh, to Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in Indonesia for organizing and cooperating for this event. Thank you very much for my DG, Ambassador Nguras Wajaya, and my DG, Ambassador Dusan Matulai, for making time to join us in this event. 
Due to the COVID-19 protocol, we have to limit the invite invitees to the maximum number of 30. And before us, we have seven Slovak companies that are related to Indonesia. We have been living in the new normal since the pandemic of COVID-19 has stricken every country of the world and none is immune to it. This pandemic has brought us to more creative and innovative with precautions, but bring us closer to the, to the existing technology. This event shows that the distance between Jakarta and Bratislava is not a limitation to interact. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia and Slovakia have been in the diplomatic ties since 1993. Slovakia is viewed as one of the Indonesian economic partners in Central Europe. This comes from the geographical location in the heart of Europe, which make it so-called getaway to Europe to bring an access of 600 million potential customers within this region. On the other hand, Slovakia may see Indonesia not only as bilateral partner, but also is a is hub to Southeast Asian region, ASEAN, a region that has an incredible fast growing market covering over 630 million con consumers. As a prominent country in ASEAN, Indonesia also offer interesting business opportunity in numerous areas such as agriculture and food, energy, transportation, logistics, and recognizing that both Indonesia and Slovakia are continuously developing its market. It brings more opportunity for trade and investment within our countries. There are still potential and space for enhancing our cooperation, not only in the sectors, but also in numbers. For some time, the embassy has, was requested to set up an Indonesian house in Bratislava and in Preshov as a showcase of Indonesian products and capabilities. We have discussed it for some time. With the present uh, situations, it is timely for setting up an Indonesian house in a virtual way so that it can be accessed by anyone and anytime as well as through handphone. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in this great occasion, allow me to officially launch the virtual Indonesian house. Indonesian House is a project that collects opportunities aimed on trade, tourism, investment, and culture of Indonesia to slow up businesses and interests individual. This platform will con consistently present Indonesian potential, capacity, and opportunities, including reliable Indonesian companies. It is a platform to build bridges between the Indonesian and Slovak entrepreneurs and bring them closer. This Indonesian house is fully created by the embassy staff in the last eight months, starting from the content, decoding process, and the layout. I am very grateful to all of them who have worked very hard to set up this virtual Indonesian house. I would like to introduce them and appreciate them for their untiring work. The person who made this possible and the creator of this virtual Indonesian house is Dela Nurlela. This is a more, she has been working very hard, you know, uh, for the last eight months. And also my economic team, Lely, Ike, Lydia, Stefan, and Dani is in Indonesia now. This is my team. And also, I would like to introduce our Slovak translator, 
Julius and Oliver and Miska. Yes, Julius. Now let's have a short tour to our virtual Indonesian house, which is in two languages, English and Slovak. Let, let me start by briefly explaining the meaning of the symbol. Gigi Balang is a symbol originated from the ethnic of Betawi who live in the city of Jakarta. The symbol means perseverance, courage, and prestige. It is our hope that this Indonesian house will be presented. The home page of Virtual Indonesian House consists of several uh, menu bars, which are home, trade, companies, investment, tourism, culture, and events. This website provides a number of important information regarding export-import procedures in Indonesia and Slovakia, investment policy, tourism, culture, education, scholarships, and company profiles that may have business opportunity for Slovak business people. At present, we have about 56 Indonesian companies in the list, and we will update it quarterly. It is our hope that some Slovak companies could be also included so that the Indonesian business could be informed about the potential of the Slovak businesses. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the virtual Indonesian house still seems a room for some improvements since it was created fully in the in-house of the embassy. Therefore, the embassy seek our support to enrich the content to make the virtual Indonesian house a plat platform and bridge between two businesses, the Slovak and Indonesian. I'm hoping that in the, uh, I'm hoping that the two chamber of commerce will work with us in the future. So we uh, will work with us in the future. So we also invite the Slovak companies with our kin who are keen to promote in to Indonesia to send their company profile to us. It is free of charge. Ladies and gentlemen, in this opportunity, I would like also to inform you that the Indonesian team is has published a promotion magazine, this one, <laughs> Nadema uh, Indonesia. Uh, this is our first magazine, and we are planning to publish it, the second one, in December. So this is a tourist promotion. This is the economic uh, promotions. <clears throat> Last but not least, I wish all, I wish that every one of you find today even fruitful and rewarding. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Dakuyen. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ibu. Now that the virtual Indonesia house has officially launched, we really hope that you are all here can share the information forward to your colleagues or partners elsewhere. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome our first keynote speaker, His Excellency Ambassador Mirah Sojaya, Director General for American and European Affairs Indonesian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador, are you there, Pak Dirjen? Yes, I'm here already. Okay, Pa, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon from Jakarta. And uh, I believe good morning uh, in Bratislava. Your Excellency, Ibu. Adiat Widi Adiwoso, the Indonesian Ambassador to Slovak Republic, Excellency Ambassador Dusan Matulai, Director General for Economic Cooperation, Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs of the Slovak Republic, dear friends, dear colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are all in a good health as well as uh, 
you are still in a good spirit as well in the middle of this uh, difficult times we are facing together. It gives me really a uh, great pleasure to deliver this remark and the launch of this virtual Indonesian house of the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Bratislava. I certainly wish to commend Ibu Dubas, the ambassador, together with her team, and also to congratulate them uh, for the initiative to establish and today to launch officially the virtual Indonesian house. This is an important breakthrough, particularly during this trying time of the unprecedented proportion that have impacted significantly our livelihood as well as our economy. There's always a saying that every cloud or every storm, there's always a silver lining. I think this is what Ambassador Wicker and her team has already been doing. We know that there is a big challenge ahead of us. We know that there are a lot of limitations confronted by all of us because of this COVID pandemic. But still, I have to congratulate and also really uh, extend our appreciation for the initiative that she has and her team has already been doing in creating this uh, good initiative that will be able to allow the direct interactions between the business people in Indonesia as well, and, as, well as in Slovak by using technology. As Ambassador Wicker mentioned earlier, it could be accessed 24 seven. So, uh, and also uh, wherever you are by using a uh, cell phone. And I think this is what technology is all about. And I think the event also, which is uh, organized in a hybrid manner, some of us uh, using uh, technological platforms from different places, but also in Bratislava, you are attending this uh, beautiful ceremony together, uh, certainly with the implementation of the very strict uh, health protocol. I think this is indeed an initiative that we need to uh, all congratulate. If we put this, uh, uh, you know, the event into the perspective, I think the uh, launching of this uh, initiative, the Indonesian House, uh, indicates, uh, uh, you know, a hard work that Ambassador Wicker and her team has already been doing. And uh, certainly, uh, we hope that this, as I mentioned earlier, will uh, enable us to increase not only uh, our trade relations between the two countries, which is still very potential to be uh, increased, and also investment as well as, of course, tourism, when the situation allows us to do that. In our short-term uh, short objective in this context, in the context of the economic recovery during the pandemic, I think what we need to do is, through this initiative, maintain the trade relations between the two countries, uh, and, uh, certainly develop a roadmap for our long-term uh, long-term bilateral relations between the two countries. To achieve this, our immediate task is very clear. We need, of course, to weather this uh, significant challenge with concrete and doable uh, efforts. And I think what Ambassador Wicker and her team is doing is certainly very concrete and also very doable to do uh, during this uh, pandemic. Some of the immediate needs during this pandemic, certainly we need to identify we need to uh, communicate between each other uh, what are the most essential needs in this, uh, in this uh, trying time. Of course, uh, immediately perhaps it comes to our mind is the availability of medical and also health equipments, such as uh, personal protective equipments, masks, medications, and all of the essential needs. Of course, we can uh, talk, if there are needs on, on that, uh, Ambassador Wicker certainly facilitate. If there are also need from our side, we would also be grateful if Ambassador Wicker could 
facilitate. And then, of course, using this uh, uh, digital platform, I think this will help further uh, the interaction between the businesses from the two countries. We have to uh, collaborate, uh, not only uh, promoting uh, trade between the two countries, but also bearing in mind that Indonesia with the ASEAN economic community, more than 600 million strong markets could also be considered as essential target market for our colleague in, in, in Slovak. But at the same time, we also see Slovak as a gateway to the surrounding uh, countries uh, in the region. So in this context, I think we need to go beyond only what are the essential need between the two countries, but also what can we do in order to facilitate a growing business interactions between the two countries, utilizing the uh, uh, significant uh, potential we can offer in our uh, respective uh, regions. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on a bilateral note, I'm happy to learn that our two countries have been enjoying progress uh, for our mutual beneficial cooperation. Our cooperation has been growing stronger on uh, various uh, sectors such as agriculture, energy, and as well as strategic industries. Ambassador Wicker mentioned earlier about uh, food, perhaps. This is also something that we can share between the, the two countries. And I think there are still sig more significant uh, potential remains to be unlocked uh, in the bilateral cooperation between the two. We must capitalize our longstanding and cordial bilateral relations to create opportunities, optimizing the potentials. When we are, all of us has to work from home, certainly with the uh, help of what the embassy has already been doing now, you can certainly access what are available in Indonesia for you to import through this uh, virtual Indonesian house. I think it will not prevent you to uh, interact, although all of us has to work from home. This also uh, provides a significant uh, potential for a digital economy. As you know that Indonesia is also one of the fastest growing country on digital economy in the region. We have the most uh, number of tech unicorn on, uh, uh, you know, on a marketplace, on uh, services, which we can also exchange notes between the two countries. How can we uh, uh, enhance collaboration uh, in, this, uh, in this field? So to that end, I wish to invite businesses from not only Slovak, but also from Indonesia to increase their regular contacts and certainly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident Ambassador Wicker and her team will uh, facilitate you uh, in order to uh, make that uh, happen as what she has already been doing now. I think we need also to increase more people-to-people -people, uh, interactions between the two countries. So then we will be able to understand better what are available, you know, because Indonesia, as perhaps many of people uh, understand is not only Bali, as you see in the background of my screen, I'm talking about uh, the 10 new Bali here. Indonesia is not only Bali, but we have more than uh, 10 uh, uh, fascinating destinations that you can explore. They are as beautiful as also attractive, as well as as unique as Bali. This is, for example, I think, through the initiative that the embassy will, uh, has already been doing and will do in the future, we will be able to increase a better understanding between the people and hopefully this will lead into uh, more intensive business to business interactions. I know that we have a, a program called Dharma Siswa. Uh, this is a scholarship for art and culture and we would like to invite uh, more and more participants uh, from uh, Slovakia to participate and to understand. And this uh, certainly will uh, enhance further a better understanding among the people of the two countries. On technology, of course, we are ready to uh, uh, 
uh, engage into a more uh, intensive uh, discussion uh, between the two countries where we can facilitate in order to increase uh, bilateral economic cooperation. Uh, certainly, we are all now still very much focusing on the uh, life of the people. We would like to make sure that the curve should be flattened. And then, of course, we need to also make an early preparation for the economic recovery. I think this is also one of the initiatives in order to embark into the economic recovery program. And hopefully, uh, we are uh, already been uh, negotiating with a number of countries to uh, create what we call as the uh, 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 travel uh, business corridor for the essential business uh, travelers. And we would like to make sure if there are investors, we have our colleague from the uh, uh, BKPM for Investment Coordinating Board, which was just uh, speaking, uh, uh, explaining about the potential of Indonesia. If there are essential business travels, there is a rise for your future investment needs in Indonesia. Certainly, despite the restrictions that we have, we will be able to facilitate uh, for not only interactions, but as well as uh, fish it if this is essential uh, in, in, in your business uh, investment plan to Indonesia. So to conclude, once again, uh, it's really a great pleasure to, uh, to interact with you of our uh, virtual uh, uh, you know, uh, media, but certainly looking forward to uh, interact directly uh, with our colleague, uh, the Director General of the, uh, of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs of uh, the Slovak Republic, as well as uh, to congratulate Ambassador Wicker and her team uh, to this uh, commendable uh, initiative. So with that, I thank you very much and hopefully you are uh, able to keep yourself uh, still healthy and then we can contribute uh, even further for our bilateral relation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fred. Uh, now, please welcome our next keynote speaker, His Excellency Ambassador Dusan Matulai, Director General for Economic Cooperation, Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, um, distinguished uh, Ambassador Ayatwidi Alivoso, the friend Vike, uh, distinguished Ambassador Swajaya uh, back, in, back in Jakarta. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, timely event, and uh, I can only uh, echo the words uh, of, uh, of Director General uh, Swajaya that uh, I can only applaud and, and congratulate you uh, for, this, uh, for this very, very commendable and very good initiative. We indeed, uh, and I hope that the symbol of Gigi Balang, if I got it correctly, will really uh, stand over this initiative and help uh, help kind of like uh, use the potential of uh, our bilateral relations. Um, I must say we live uh, indeed in a very uh, strange uh, strange times, uh, which is which is pretty much uh, uh, kind of like. Um, demonstrated by our uh, weird kind of like wearings and uh, all different kinds of uh, multicultural ways how we greet each other with like bounces and and, and whatnot <laughs> i mean everybody developed his own style uh, for this and that's why this initiative is very important because it's helping to uh, to bridge over uh, the the current uh, current weird, weird time as i would uh, would name it where the, where the direct contact, which also um, my visa -vis in Jakarta mentioned, uh, we are lacking and we are hoping that we will soon overcome this and we will be able to uh, meet, in, uh, meet in good health and uh, have these negotiations uh, in person. Uh, the advantage to speak uh, as the third uh, in a row uh, after so eloquent speakers is that I could basically say that I subscribe to everything what has been said and sit down, but allow me still to say a couple of words. Uh, Indonesia indeed is, is no uh, stranger for Slovakia. Uh, take the famous Luwak coffee uh, and, and, and the, and the tourist, uh, tourist destination have been already mentioned. For instance, for my son, he would maybe struggle to tell you what's the capital city of say Portugal or something like that in Europe, but he knows everything about Jakarta, about Indonesia, uh, because that's the home of the famous uh, Komodo dragon. 
and uh, Indonesia is like uh, the country of, of, his, of his main interest. So indeed, this is a country of great opportunities. Many of them have been, have been mentioned. Slovakia, although uh, certainly much smaller than Indonesia, as we all know, uh, is also an, uh, an interesting partner. And uh, I see the potential uh, of developing it either in the bilateral, uh, on the bilateral, or the only one from the former Comecon countries in the region. Uh, those are certainly uh, important. Uh, it's, it's one of uh, the top companies in a very specific area, uh, which is, uh, which is um, meteorology, which is a very important factor for, for agricultural production and many other, many other sectors. So I think this is one of, one of the companies which is exactly in the right place uh, when we speak about the Slovak-Indonesian uh, uh, cooperation. We have also several other examples of good cooperation. I will only mention, for instance, the tropical wheat. Uh, we have a great experience in the agricultural um, um, area in terms of in terms of uh, uh, cultivating uh, crops and adapting them, for instance, for the very specific uh, uh, conditions which are in the Indonesia throughout the whole islands of Indonesia. Indonesia is, of course, not Slovakia, where we think that 500 kilometers between Bratislava and Kosice is a distance. I guess that's considered in Indonesia a walking distance. Um, I, as I said, COVID, uh, the pandemic uh, brought, uh, brought upon us um, many challenges. It's a, it's a dangerous time, but every crisis bears also, uh, bears also opportunities. These opportunities uh, can be also translated into businesses. Uh, in Slovakia, COVID sparked truly uh, a, a vast array of uh, fantastic initiatives, business models, new products, and so on. And uh, this is something which we offer also to our Indonesian partners. We spoke about of such opportunities. Uh, I hope that they might be might be utilized and and, and used in in further in further collaboration uh, further further on. Uh, we have uh, excellent companies which are in the area of uh, the chemistry, which are the uh, so yarn, which is antibacterial, antiviral. We have, uh, we have scientific, scientists uh, who are developing a vaccine in Slovakia, our own vaccine, by the way, not many know, maybe Axon Neurosciences. We have a company which is an excellent, which developed one of the top, top sensitive tests uh, for, for COVID-19. Um, multiplex DX and many companies which uh, which are which are interesting and which are in the context of COVID-19 a possible partner for Indonesia for an interesting uh, cooperation. Uh, an important uh, aspect has been mentioned as well, uh, namely ASEAN from the point of view of Indonesia. Indeed, uh, regional cooperation is. Uh, Topic, which uh, which is important to have in mind. Slovakia also belongs to a wider region of let's call it Central Europe, which is, for instance, defined by uh, V4. Uh, that is a, that is an interesting platform for cooperation, be it with uh, with uh, with Indonesia on a V4 Indonesia track, or V4 and ASEAN maybe uh, also as a cooperation. There is of course quite a quite a big difference. ASEAN is more institutionalized than before. Before is more of an uh, platform of cooperation. Sorry. I, I guess I get digitalized or <laughs> I'm just <laughs> moving too much the microphone. Uh, but certainly um, the, the, the bigger frame and the bigger picture is the cooperation between the EU and Indonesia. As I said, Slovakia is an EU member and uh, we are a highly open pro-export oriented country. So uh, our kind of like acting and our um, efforts in the EU are uh, towards this goal to develop as much as possible of a multi multilateral, multinational and international cooperation and help, help uh, prosper in this way. Um, unfortunately, I must, I must say that uh, I don't want to throw numbers on you, but our, our trade, uh, trade uh, numbers are not exactly um, breathtaking. And this is something where we, where we need to kind of like fully um, 
uh, explore the potential of, of the Slovak-Indonesian uh, cooperation. That's why we are here. That's why I'm mentioning the several, the several uh, possibilities. And thank you for the presentation of excellent uh, Indonesian companies, uh, which uh, I know from my, from my previous uh, uh, discussions and meetings and, and, and trips to Indonesia and, and, and also trips from Indonesia, Indonesian entrepreneurs here, which I think helped already spark a couple of cooperations. And I hope that uh, this dynamic uh, will continue uh, developing. Uh, it has been said um, Indonesia is the fourth uh, largest populous country in the world and the numbers are growing. Moreover, this is also a country which is seeking uh, a, a deep modernization uh, under, under, the, under the able leadership of the uh, re-elected uh, president. And uh, we hope that we can, we can help in, this, in, this, uh, uh, in the future. You, many of you maybe know that uh, it's, uh, we have a long lasting tradition in cooperation with Indonesia uh, from the past world also helping with the modernization. So I hope that interesting projects and cooperations together, be it in the area of uh, climate change, renewable energies, or all the other industries which I mentioned, ICT, we even produce uh, airplanes in Slovakia, no, but not many, many know that. So indeed, uh, there are many, many uh, and, um, and uh, Indonesia, and once, once again, Big congratulation uh, to this uh, to this initiative. I can only applaud and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Excellencies. Thank you, Excellencies. Uh, now, please welcome uh, virtually from Jakarta, the Chairman Committee on Central Europe, Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mr. Suleiman Saleh. Mr. Suleiman, are you there already? Yeah, Ibu Bidia, okay. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dobri den, everybody. Selamat siang atau selamat sore dari dari Jakarta. First of all, I would like to congratulate to uh, our ambassador, Her Excellency Ibu Aditya uh, Vidi uh, Adiwoso uh, and uh, her team to facilitate uh, this uh, special event. Uh, business meeting, as we know, is currently not possible, but uh, this is the best way we can get together and know each other. Also, uh, very special thanks to her team that could uh, uh, make this possible of a virtual uh, Indonesian house, uh, I forgot, all the names, but I think it's Ibu Bella, Ibu Leli, Ibu Ika, uh, Padeni, and many others that uh, probably I, uh, I don't remember, but all of you have done a very good job. It will help uh, our chamber, and uh, I, I hope also uh, my colleague, Mr. Uri, to uh, get more active in um, having discussions and exhibit our products and services. Also, uh, many thanks to uh, Her Excellency, Mr. Mura Swajaya, uh, Her Excellency, Mrs. Excellency, Mr. Dushan Matulai. Uh, you have already spoken most of the things uh, I wanted to mention. Thank you very much. But um, I see that um, uh, from our previous meetings, we had uh, last year, uh, I think uh, one of the big meeting we had in Bratislava was with uh, Sario. It was a very interesting meeting. We bring some Indonesian uh, producers and uh, entrepreneurs to uh, Bratislava where we could meet together, which at the moment is not possible. So I'm very thankful that uh, we have this uh, Indonesian house uh, which is more or less for us like a virtual exhibition and marketplace to get together and discuss uh, all the opportunities we can develop together. Uh, we also had uh, a counter visit uh, in, in the same year uh, to the trade exhibition Indonesia, 
uh, where also our colleagues from Slovakia has visited Indonesia and we had many discussion and uh, many uh, positive and fruitful results from this meeting. So, uh, as you can see, uh, getting together uh, is very important for, for us, uh, especially for the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce, because uh, both our chambers, the Slovakian and the Indonesian, I think the mic is muted, but Sulaiman. Sorry. Hello? Yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. So uh, uh, our, our cooperation with the Slovakian uh, Chamber of Commerce was very active in building awareness of both markets, uh, doing partnership identification, business matching, and uh, country visits, and and trade missions. This is what we have done in the past uh, years. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why it's uh, for me uh, a very nice uh, uh, opportunity to, to, to talk to you today. And I hope this event uh, will be repeated. Uh, and uh, we can also uh, invite more uh, companies from Indonesia and from Slovakia to introduce their products and services. Um, as already mentioned by the previous, uh, uh, in the previous presentations, like uh, Aditya um, and uh, Mr. Uh, Hendar Sohalim and Paraimon, uh, we have many uh, interesting products uh, we can offer, but uh, Indonesia is very rich in uh, natural resources also in agriculture. Um, it's a huge country, the fourth biggest country in the world, but uh, we still uh, are trying to develop our potentials in becoming one of uh, the, the most important supply chain country. Uh, all these resources we have tried to uh, develop uh, 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 that we can produce all these uh, uh, raw materials and uh, it, make them to a more added value products. Yeah. So uh, I hope that in the future we, through this uh, virtual uh, events uh, and the Indonesian house, we can uh, have more discussion about some research and development cooperation with Slovakia, with our colleagues and friends. Also uh, to help us to develop and improve our manufacturing capacities in uh, sectors like uh, iron and steel production, metallurgy, uh, chemical production, electronics, transportation equipments, textiles, defense and um, uh, pharmaceuticals, yeah. So uh, uh, capital goods uh, are very important for Indonesia, I think, to, to uh, improve our capacity and export our products to uh, our neighbor countries and maybe also to Europe. Um, as already mentioned, uh, Southeast Asia is a, is a huge market, over 600 million people uh, we, you have in this market. and. Um, uh, um, uh, Slovakia is a very important partner for Indonesia to, uh, to cooperate not only in the trade and sell goods uh, and so on. Of course, this is also very much welcome. But as we saw uh, from uh, one of the first presentation from uh, Hendar Sohalim, we, we have uh, these raw materials that can be produced not only into in the tire industry, but also can be used in other uh, uh, industrial sectors. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we can get uh, our partners in Slovakia that have the technology or, 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 or ma manufacturing goods that can, uh, uh, where we can produce more uh, added value products from these uh, uh, natural resources. 
So um, I hope that uh, um, uh, we uh, will more and more use this uh, digital platform and get together uh, more in the future. And uh, once again, I uh, would like to thank uh, our ambassador, Ibu Wika, for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to uh, introduce myself and, 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 and meet everybody. Thank you very much. I give the uh, microphone to Ibu Vidya. Hello. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Yurai Maitan, Director of Bratislava Regional Chamber, Slovak Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Dear Mrs. Ambassador of the Atlantic Division, uh, Mr. Ambassador Nurek uh, Snojaya, uh, Mr. Ambassador Matulai, dear colleagues uh, on the other side of the line in Indonesia, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank very much to Mrs. Ambassador for the invitation to this very nice meeting by the occasion of uh, the launching of this very interesting project which uh, the House of Indonesian House and uh, I hope that we will uh, together use this uh, uh, new project for promoting uh, opportunity, opportunities and business uh, in Slovakia among our enterprises. Chambers of Commerce are here for uh, intermediation, the contacts uh, between enterprises, in this case uh, between Slovakian and Indonesian uh, enterprises. So, uh, thanks to very good cooperation with the embassy and a very good uh, relationship, I can say also the personal relationship, also thanks to our president, Mr. Igor Nunes, I have to say that we have uh, really good information about the opportunities to make also investment in Indonesia, and especially in the field of so-called large-scale investments. Uh, in the fields where in Slovakia we can find cer certain history or rich experiences in these areas. It is, for example, electricity generation and the supply of energy to the customers. Then it is also in the field of mining, for example, and not only mining, but also the elaboration of, uh, of uh, the minerals, because uh, in your country there are uh, really large uh, deposits of uh, rare minerals, and uh, it is possible to use the experiences of our enterprises in Slovakia in this field as well. And uh, also, for example, in uh, searching of new sources of uh, energy, like, for example, uh, geothermal energy and uh, drilling in uh, this field uh, using so-called sophisticated methods of uh, drilling, uh, for example, uh, the laser uh, drillings. These are, I would say, large-scale investment opportunities, but of course there are many opportunities concerning the small businesses as well. Some of them were also introduced from the side of our partners on the other side. We are here really to promote these opportunities among our enterprises here in Slovakia. And uh, I have to say that uh, we are trying to organize also uh, events where this information can be uh, brought to our enterprises. This year, we wanted to organize also the business mission to, uh, to Jakarta in November, uh, where uh, this Expo Trade Expo will be organized. I don't know exactly now, it is closed. Mm, yes, it is postponed, yes. Uh, it is one of the biggest, uh, more or less, uh, general-oriented uh, exhibition, and we wanted to uh, uh, bring to uh, our enterprises to this exhibition. Unfortunately, it is not possible. Uh, we have to use such this opportunity. We will be able to start also with this uh, 
uh, opportunities. I would like also to say that there is opportunity also to welcome uh, Indonesian of their participation uh, in uh, these exhibitions. I have to say that this exhibition place called Inheba uh, is a member of uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, and uh, we have very good relationship to the management of this exhibition place and we can really uh, give uh, to uh, to Indonesian companies very good conditions for uh, the participation at uh, these uh, exhibitions. Uh, I have to say maybe uh, uh, that uh, this project, uh, Ritual House, uh, is very interesting and uh, uh, I uh, can promise you, Mrs. Ambassador, that uh, we will promote uh, this uh, new project, virtual Indonesian house, also in uh, our magazine, free of charge, of course. And uh, I hope it can really help uh, to uh, support the cooperation uh, between our enterprises. So uh, that's maybe all from uh, my side. Uh, uh, we are ready, you know very well, Mrs. Ambassador, to cooperate very closely uh, and uh, I hope that in the near future we will be able to continue also in these uh, other activities uh, which uh, will bring uh, our enterprises also face-to-face -face meetings. So thank you very much and greetings also to Indonesia. Thank you, sir. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I give back the floor back to the moderator in Jakarta, I would like to introduce our dear counterparts who are able to participate in today's event. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID restriction measures, we can only have seven companies to participate in today. Uh, but last year, I guess if we have previously, we have 45 businesses for the same event last year in 2019. So, First, I would like to introduce Valive Lozyska. is here with us today. <laughs> Ladies from Valive. <laughs> uh, wait, I will put that. Okay, so the Jakarta counterparts, uh, Indonesian counterparts can also see you. <laughs> uh, also, we have here Mediatek Audio Equipment. <laughs> Sir, thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. And Eden, food and beverages, sir, thank you for coming. Uh, from Bali Mountain, food and beverages. Uh, B Airline, aircraft. Kofaco, Kofaco, machinery attachment. And also, uh, Mr. Omelka from Microstep. Huh? Oh, yeah. And also, Mr. Milan Chompa is here with us. Yes. Of course. <laughs> oh, from uh, Indonesian Slovak Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. Uh, now, um, let's give a the floor back to Mr. Moderator, who will lead uh, the sharing session, I believe, from uh, Mr. Omelka. Uh, pa Hendra, are you ready, Pa? Yes, uh, thank you, MC, I think. Thank you. Uh, no, I think after, uh, uh, I would like to thank to all excellencies for uh, addressing the remarks. Uh, I think it's very important for all of us and also for the representative from the Chambers of Commerce. I think for the last part of our session today, we would like to invite of one of the Slovak companies who has been successful running business in Indonesia. This is so important since I think in the first session we already listened to uh, three Indonesian company, two Indonesian companies exactly who would like to explore the market uh, in the uh, in the region. So in this regard, I think we would like to invite the representative from the MicroStep Slovak, I think who has been uh, uh, what we call it, uh, conducting business in Indonesia. I think it's very important for all, all of us here as well in Jakarta to know what exactly, I think, how to enter the market in Indonesia, what's the, the challenge and the opportunity. And this is good 
uh, they, they, and this would be a good example for uh, all, all, all participa participants who are attending this event. And now I think uh, for a uh, representative of MicroSteps Slovak, uh, the floor is yours. Your Excellencies, uh, the distinguished guests, dear ladies and gentlemen, I am very much honored and uh, pleased uh, to have this opportunity uh, to present our story. It is written in the success story, so you will, you will see. <laughs> uh, my name is Josef Venelka. I am representing company Microstep. Uh, our company is dealing with uh, meteorology, hydrology, marine systems, uh, radiation, and uh, we are present in many countries. One of them is uh, Indonesia. And uh, we started, uh, we tried to start in this country in 2007. But uh, our first business, uh, our first contract, uh, we realized only in 2012. So uh, it took us five years to, to enter enter the, the market. Uh, this, uh, this is, I don't know if it is typical, but uh, it is not easy. Uh, it was not easy for us to start the business there. And uh, it took us uh, such a long time to find a good uh, partner. We knew it and our partner, Carpudi Mandiri, was already in the business of uh, meteorology, hydrology, and marine. So we only continue with him. We supplied in 2012 uh, meteorological stations, uh, the same in 2013. In uh, 2015, we, we supplied first main stations. And uh, in 2015, there was a, another milestone in this country. We got a first uh, airport weather observing system for a small airport. Why it was a milestone? Uh, this was a small airport, but uh, uh, we presented our technology and our main uh, customer, which is Badan Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysics, uh, shortcut is BMKG, wanted to check if our system for the airports are uh, available, good, and uh, that's why we received this small contract. We proved our technology, and that's why. Uh, uh, 2015, we've got another contract contract for uh, for Soekan Hatta Airport, which is a main Jakarta airport with uh, 54 million passengers per year, one of the largest airports in the world. So, in 2015, I would tell that from 2012-2015, we were building the trust of the customer to give us uh, bigger projects. So, uh, again. This project was uh, successful, so the customer was uh, satisfied with us, or user. So that's why we started another uh, big airport, which is uh, Jogakarta and uh, Surabaya in 2019. Uh, there was a special, another milestone in, uh, at the Surabaya airport, where we were able to integrate all other systems which were there installed before us so that it was a, another proof of uh, our capabilities so um, we started to extend our cooperation with the main customer in in indonesia so this is a very very brief story uh, this year they were planned a big project but unfortunately because of the COVID crisis, uh, these projects are postponed so that we hope that we will have the opportunity to partic participate in the tenders. This project was uh, to build up a new system at uh, Karnahata International Airport. It is a state-of-art system. There are only very few of such systems in the world. And uh, uh, Indonesia and BMKG decided to build up such system. Uh,
which we saw by special design systems. The snow strips usually the very nice places for barbecues and uh, other events uh, of the city. So that we have to the pilot from the that he's going. or about the weather at the airport he, he needs to have a forecast and uh, again it is a special special situation because usually these airports if they are flying to the islands they without the landing they cannot return back because of the fuel so that uh, the system must be specially designed to uh, to keep uh, a safe traffic of this uh, small small planes so this was one thing and what is the most important uh, for the extension of the cooperation between uh, slovakia and indonesia uh, we discussed it and we were thinking how to how to extend the cooperation at uh, with Ubulike, we came to an idea to uh, arrange the cooperation between uh, BMKG and Slovak Hydrometeorology Institute. So that BMKG is the Metrologic Institute in uh, Indonesia, and uh, uh, our Hydrometeorology Institute is here in Bratislava. Uh, the reason was that uh, at the Hydrometeorology Institute there are some technologies which are state of the art, and uh, this can be this knowledge can be transferred uh, to Indonesia. And uh, also, there are some researches going on in Indonesia, researches going on at the uh, Slovak side. So, the idea to start such a wider cooperation was very welcome at Slovak side as well as at the uh, Indonesian side. And there was a plan the visit of uh, BKNG uh, management to our Hydrometer Institute to sign the memorandum of understanding and to. Uh, Unfortunately, this is postponed, but I hope that uh, this will start next year when the traveling allows, uh, allows this. So, and at the end, I would like to thank you very much uh, to Indonesian Embassy and uh, mainly uh, Ibuvike for continuous support and uh, these uh, ideas which we receive uh, from, from them. So, please, uh, briefly, the, the story. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph Omelka, for uh, your uh, update, I think, uh, if I could say, I think, for the presentation about the exper business experience in Indonesia. And we took note, I think, this is very good initial, uh, good, uh, uh, initial step for other uh, Slovak companies who would like to expand the business in Indonesia. And I just saw, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one participant just uh, uh, intend to raise the questions uh, during this session. Could you uh, maybe, I don't know whether I could see this part. None of them, okay then. All right, okay then. Um, excellencies, uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, now it come to an end of our uh, it um, it come to uh, you know we come to an end of our virtual program today and then uh, I would like to thank again to the Embassy of Indonesia in Bratislava especially in Bratislava especially to Ambassador Yudia Visi Adiwoso uh, with uh, her enable team for this good initiative and also for uh, Ambassador Anguraswajaya the Director General for America and Europe Affairs and also Ambassador Dusan Machulai and colleagues from Indonesian and Slovak Chambers of Commerce and Industry. It is our hope that I think this uh, event would be, uh, would, be, uh, would be good uh, sign that uh, we are not uh, halt our initiative to, to, to uh, keep uh, searching opportunity, uh, a business opportunity between two countries. In this regard, of course, I think we're looking forward as well the uh, participants of the participation of the uh, Slovak business uh, community at our virtual trade expo Indonesia, despite uh, not a uh, real uh, exhibition, but of course, we're still expecting uh, 
business people from Slovak to participate in this uh, virtual exhibition uh, next uh, in, in next coming months. So, uh, but uh, our embassy in Slovak will uh, disseminate this information later on. So maybe uh, all participants organized by chambers of commerce could uh, assist lend assistance to the business people in Slovak who uh, like who, I think who want to join this uh, Internet Expo Indonesia. Without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, again thank you again for all participants for the present for for the for all uh, uh, distinguished delegates for uh, attending this event. And then uh, I would like to uh, say stay healthy and may mighty uh, um, uh, may uh, all the best for all of us. Thank you and thank terima kasih. Terima Thank you, Ambassador Ura. Thank you, Pak Director. We can maybe end the Zoom now. Bye, Pak. Thank you, colleagues in Jakarta. Okay. Uh, just as mentioned before, uh, the Trade Expo Indonesia will still be held uh, in Jakarta, but uh, participants from all around the world can participate virtually. And the embassy, the Indonesian embassy in Bratislava will gladly uh, assist and facilitate all the businesses in Slovakia if you'd like to join us uh, virtually. And maybe we will keep contact with uh, Chamber of Commerce to disseminate, disseminate uh, further information. Is it on the 10th or the 16th of Six, I Maybe the, uh, the date will change me, but I will make sure the latest I knew because uh, we just heard uh, this news uh, last week, pa. so thank you. <laughs> The embassy will facilitate yeah. any uh, participant. Yeah. Uh, participant would like to join the, the uh, Indonesian trade export virtually, you know, and then we, we will try to make uh, any uh, uh, any uh, what do you call it? Yeah. A contact, yeah. you know. So uh, we will inform you uh, the date, mm -hmm. and maybe. Can inform us what kind of business that you want to 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 see or you want to have contact. Oh, then we will facilitate and work with the team of the uh, Indonesian Trade Expo in Jakarta. Yeah. So we will inform you. Uh, it it must be in November, early November. Ten to sixteen. Ten to sixteen of November. So uh, please let us know yeah. and before we uh, continue with our lunch uh, we i would like to thank you again for participating at this event you know and then i'm still waiting from the slovak side to give their company profile for, to uh, to help us uh, to put in our indonesian house and for jakarta and london thank you very much for being with us and we still need your support, you know. And also, Pa Hendra and Pak Punjul from Directorate uh, Europe, Europe yeah. too, who has uh, coordinating with this. Uh, thank you so much for your cooperation and your support. Stay healthy and keep safe yourself. Yeah, and okay. it's time to say goodbye to the Zoom. Yes. <laughs> so because we want to start eating now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, so thank, thank, you so thank, you. thank you so much, Pak Sudirman, Pak thank you, Pak Punjul, thank you so much, thank you so much. Yeah, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like